not balance, harmony. Balance is an illusion. For a long time, I was all about work-life balance. And I really like that. I touted that, right? Like as one of my main life principles, right? And then I realized that that just doesn't exist. Coming in. There will never be a point in time where everything is even or equal. Or even separatable. Right, you know, and so... Especially as a small business owner. Yeah. Solopreneur. It's just part of life. But we're now just working remotely during the pandemic, right? Like we're Mm -hmm. working at home, we're living at work. Our worlds are colliding big time, right? Where we once, you know, got a break from our spouse and our children. We don't have that boundary any longer, right? We have to create that boundary. (laughs) I want to get through trouble. I used to get super frustrated because I was always striving for balance and it was this elusive thing, right? And I was, I felt like I was chasing, and I was, I was chasing after something that was just unattainable, right? right? What I really wanted was harmony. I wanted the areas of my life to work and flow in a, in a, in a good way together, right? I didn't want to feel like I was, you know, leaving my coworkers out to dry because I had to take my daughter to a doctor's appointment, right? You know, so, um, yeah, just being able to have things flow and be flexible and feel like I had a lot of acceptance around the fact that, okay, some weeks my job is going to need me more and I can be more present, right? And some weeks my family is really going to need me more, right? And how can I just balance my time and my energy and learn to trust myself and create systems that really help me do that, right? Help me optimize my time, help me draw boundaries where I need to. Um, Yeah. I feel like we just used, uh, wasted some good content. I'll have to take some of those sound bites out. Well, you're recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't part of our like little spiel. So I can use like sound bites. What else? Yeah. We'll figure it out. You're just such a talented editor. I know you can do it. <laughs> no, not really. But that's okay. <sighs> so so resilience. Resiliency, yes. Okay. You know, resilience, resiliency, being more resilient. You see it a lot now. And, I, you know, I realized that what I was striving for too, and that was to be more resilient, right? Because I felt like life kept knocking me down. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one thing to know that you're a strong person and you can handle a lot, but it takes its toll, right? You know, when Mm -hmm. you feel like life just isn't letting up, you have those moments where, God, one more thing happens, right? You're just teetering on the edge of really losing your, you know what, right? That's usually my regular day. Yeah, I mean, this constant state of change and all the stress that we are just typically under, I think a lot of people live in that space of, you know, being right on the verge of losing it, right? Or feeling like they are, you know, feeling like they're just, you know, there's this tension that they're this discontent, right? Mm. That they're not really enjoying whatever it is that's happening at that moment, right? And when things get challenging or tough, when they go as, un, as you know, not as expected, we get frustrated. Our mindset gets out of whack, right? We easily kind of go into that negative thinking, the catastrophizing mode, right? So how can we stop all that? How can we try and really stay in this unshakable place where we feel like we can handle anything? And if you're just tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, this is the mental health check. And there's no need to redo a lot of that because it was brilliant. So let's talk about that now. Uh, as always, thank you for joining us, Miss Kimberly Smith. I am your for host me, Travis. or your co-host, uh, Travis Lamneck, the chief clarifier of fuzziness. And so we are going to clarify some of the fuzziness today around resiliency and what being resilient looks like. Uh, so... You know, that being said, kind of backtracking a little bit from where we just came from. Yeah. Um, 
this is such a different time for so many different people uh, just dealing with constant change, right? Yeah. There's more change right now than it feels like there ever has been before. I mean, huge turnovers in uh, just political reign, I guess you could say, R-E-I-G-H-G-N. And then uh, today is March 10th. And so some people might recognize that as the day Texas reopened, right? Huge change there. People still working from home. Uh, living at work, whichever way you want to describe it. I remember when HR used to frown whenever you had a bed inside the office, but uh, <laughs> I guess people do that quite often now. It's just, it kind of happens. Um, yeah, so just talk us through a little bit of that. And, and, and this topic got brought up for us because you kind of had a little pivot in your, in your coaching uh, to where you kind of changed it from anxiety to a resiliency coach. So what, what does that look like? Maybe we start there. Yeah, sure. So, you know, uh, anxiety has been part of my story, right? I mean, life was coming at me hard and heavy, right? I mean, career taking off, marriage, family, you know, buying a house. Actually, we owned multiple houses um, and rented one of them. And, you know, my, my husband just had a very demanding job, right? And I was also working full time. We had a newborn, right? Like it was, you know, I wore the house manager hat. So, Anxiety was kind of the red flag to me, right? Like when I started to experience those symptoms I had never had before, shortness of breath, um, you know, not sleeping well, uh, you know, stomach issues, right? It was, it was very alarming. Um, and that was the red flag to me knowing that something needed to change in my lifestyle. Mm. Um, but what I realized too was that it wasn't just about, you know, combating the the negative symptoms or, or overcoming the anxiety I think that's a huge piece of it I think that number one the stress levels in our lives are just off the charts mm. um, and mental health is a top priority now people are realizing especially over the last year what this pandemic and this isolation has really done to all of our mindsets right you know and, and mm -hmm. how it's changed how we feel and view the world and how we connect with people right so it's a really deep topic um, but anxiety, you know, I think is one part of the, the thing that I was trying to help myself with. Right. And what I see with my clients is that a lot of times they are experiencing a heavy stress load, um, a lot of overwhelm, sometimes that anxiety and burnout piece too. Um, but a lot of them too are just within some type of transition, whether it's a career transition or. Um, they just feel like they're entering this new phase of life and they need to find this, just a new lifestyle, right? A new grounding. Um, they've had a, a lot of things going on maybe, and they feel like they need to build up some of that strength again, right? That mental stamina, mm -hmm. uh, their energy, their confidence, right? That's all a part of being resilient, okay. um, especially when, when I look at it, right? So, mm -hmm. so even positive change is still change and it still adds additional stress and, and anxiety. Um, sure. So w when you're looking at putting that new foundation in there, what is, what does something like that look like? Cause that sounds like a pretty massive step. Is it as big as it sounds or is it something simple? You know, it can be really as simple. I, I think it, it starts off simple for sure. I mean, okay. whenever you're, you're making a concerted effort to change a habit or change a lifestyle, right? You want to do it slowly and gradually because of course you don't want to overwhelm yourself more and then completely abandon whatever it is that you were seeking to, to change, right? So, you know, for me, and I'll talk a little bit about resiliency in itself, I think about elasticity when I think something's resilient, right? Like mm. something kind of springing back into form, something that's unshakable. Um, and you know, for, for me, what I've figured out, and even my clients, is that everybody has what I call a baseline, right? Like, what is the baseline of when you feel really good? When things are working well in your life, what does that look like, right? What things have to be in line to achieve that feeling, right? Of where mm -hmm. you feel good, you feel rested, you feel like your energy is great each day, you feel like you have a happy and positive mindset, right? Um, you're getting enough of, you know, time with your, your spouse or your friends or your family, you know, your, your, all of your needs are being met. What does that baseline look like? 
Mm. Um, and a lot of times it has to do with, you know, self-talk and, and how we talk to ourselves internally. A lot of it is self-care. Mm. A lot of it is time management and boundaries, right? Mm. Um, or wellness piece, right? Like more of nutrition and diet and exercise. Um, but for everybody, you know, wh what's most important to tackle first, maybe something different, right? Um, maybe somebody's mindset's okay, but they're just feeling really, really depleted and run down, right? So mm. their starting point might be something more along the line of, of, of self-care uh, and creating more space in their schedule. Hmm. Okay. So you've used yourself as, as, a, as an example a few times. Uh, what does that transition kind of, what did that look like for you? Well, first it started with therapy, Travis. I always, <laughs> it definitely started with therapy. Um, for me, it was really looking at how I was living, right? You know, I looked around and I was like, this is not the dream. You know, this was not what I dreamt of. Um, and I wasn't just talking about my career, right? I was talking about how I was spending my time. You know, I was talking about how I felt about myself. You know, um, what I what I saw when I looked at the future, right? Like, I honestly had no game plan. <laughs> I, I, I was really just trying to keep up with life. I wasn't trying to visualize or bring my vision into reality, right? Okay. So that is something that I believe wholeheartedly that if you can, if you can dream it, if you have a desire for something, then you can absolutely make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything can be broken down into, you know, a series of goals and steps and actions. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's always possible to take those inspired actions to get where you want to go. Inspired actions to get where you want to go. Uh, so when it comes to that, because I think that's a, a very good little soundbite, uh, inspired actions to get where you want to go. How do you start with the end in mind? How do you find that destination for yourself? How do you get people to, to figure out what that looks like? Yeah, you allow yourself to dream. You know, you allow yourself to really visualize what is my best life ever? How do I want to live, right? Am I living it now, right? Because chances are, if you're feeling frustrated, you know, frustration, I've all, I always say is transformative, right? When we're frustrated, that's when we're at that breaking point, that's when we will do anything to get out of it, right? We're so uncomfortable that we have to move. Um, so yeah, visualizing and really thinking about what did I want when I was a kid? What did I really think life was going to be like? What, are, what were the things that I wanted to do? You know, what's important to me? You know, so a lot of this starts with breaking down you know, your values and what you really, what's important to you, right? Um, and then seeing how you can bring that to life in your everyday work, in your everyday actions, right? Like for me, health and wellness is always going to be important. Mm -hmm. Knowing why it's important, right? Well, I want to, I want to live to be a centurion. <laughs> I want to live to be a hundred years old. Yeah. So I got to take care of myself, right? And for everybody out there in TV land, I really don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be the cantankerous old guy who just hates being around everybody and is just, just a grumpy Gus, right? Yeah. So if, if truly something is a value of yours, then you are willing to do what it takes to, to live it and to achieve it, right? To have it as mm -hmm. your own, right? I mean... I forgot who wrote the book, but it's called Life's Healing Choices. Um, and I remember there was there was just a phrase in there that says, until the pain outweighs your desire to change, you're not going to do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and that's where it does become tricky, right? Because we find that we want these things. They're important to us. But then we come, come up against fear, mm -hmm. right? That's where courage and resiliency really play to each other, right? Because courage is strength in the face of pain or grief, right? Mm -hmm. Courage is moving through that pain or grief or uncomfortable place, right? Of the unknown of something new, something that we've never done before, right? The fear, we move through the fear of failure, you know, mm -hmm. the fear of, you know, I think fear of failure is pretty much the founding one, right? 
Um, I can just think of all the people that I know that have a fear of change. And so the, and I just used the word cantankerous. I don't know where that came from, but uh, I can think of several cantankerous people that are so comfortable because it's their normal to be frustrated. It's their normal to be negative. Um, for, for those You've people- acquire that identity actually. Yeah. Now, now they're, they're so attached to that identity and yeah, letting go of that would mean letting go of a piece of themselves, right? So are, are they kind of a lost cause until they get to the end of themselves? Because uh, in my mind, trying to get them to realize that they need to change, trying to get them to realize that a better life is available to them. Uh, it's kind of like leading a horse to water. You can get them there, but you, you can't make them drink. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really think that there's any need to try and change people or their perspective, right? We're all on our own journey. And that can be really, really difficult because a lot of times these people are in our family, right? They may be uh, a brother-in-law or a cousin or a sibling, right? A direct sibling. Um, and the person you see in the mirror looking back at you sometimes. You froze and that is a great look that you're giving me like you are absolutely nuts. So this is actually kind of funny. It's less funny now. Okay, during this awkward silence, let's share a couple of dad okay. jokes. Okay, oh, hold on. You, you froze for a real while. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it was me. Oh, well, well, you froze. I probably froze on your end, which is kind of funny, but yes, um, I always wonder what the recording I'm the one recording. <laughs> I have a lot of kind of never mind anyway well what you were saying about changing people yeah changing people your mindset I really just think that's a fruit like a waste of energy right okay everybody's on their own journey um not everybody self-actualizes right so mm. that's really not our responsibility to worry about right all we can do is live our own life and, and maybe set an example but yeah, a lot of times folks like that seem to be trapped in that victim mentality, right? That like right. life just has it out for them. Like this is what I've always, you know, gotten. So this is what I'll always get, right? Like, and they they talk themselves out of it, right? Like they have mm. created a negative, pessimistic, you know, catastrophizing mindset that really does not serve them in any good way right mm. so I mean that's the beautiful part of our brain right is that we can always change that but we have to decide that we want to change it right we right. have to decide like oh yeah neuroplasticity that's a real thing and I can actually change the thoughts that I think and also then change my emotions behaviors and actions it just takes time it does it takes a, it takes a huge commitment it really really does Okay, so we're, we were talking about, you know, having that baseline, right? What makes yeah. you happy? What gives you that energy? Um, it, once you establish that baseline, do you try to build it from there and reestablish a new baseline? Or do you just try to really focus on having that baseline? You know, I think your baseline will <clears throat> maybe change in, in some of its characteristics, right? Mine kind of stay the same, right? Like mine are like, yeah, meeting your own needs, right? Making sure all your needs are met, right? So for mm -hmm. me, it's a lot of, to do with nutrition and, you know, exercise and getting the um, hours of sleep that I get at night, right? It's uh, making sure that I stick to my routines and take my supplements and, you know, all of that, right? Because, and, and your baseline, again, you could think of too as your self-esteem, right? Mm. So we build our self-esteem and we, and we can feel good about ourselves and the way that we're living when we're living the way that we want to live, right? When we're, when we're doing the things that we want to do for mm -hmm. ourselves, right? When we can be proud and respect our daily actions. Well, what are those daily actions, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I meditate every day. You know, I make sure that, you know, I, I prepare my meals for the week so I don't have to stress out. And, you know, so it can look really different for everybody. Um, I'm making sure that I'm spending quality time with my spouse and my kids. Um, 
but knowing that baseline, I think is, is really crucial. And it might just be a handful of things, right? It might just be a handful of things because those are usually the first to go when we are going through a transition, when we are hit with maybe an unexpected family crisis or something, right? Oh, all of a sudden you're stressed out. You're not getting the amount of sleep that you normally get, right? So now you wake up and you're fatigued the next day and therefore your cognitive abilities and your functioning are completely out of whack, right? And you feel even more stressed. Well, what's the root cause? Well, I haven't been sleeping well. Well, let me find a solution for that, right? Mm. Okay. So that self-awareness is, I guess that would be where we need to start. Awareness is always where it starts, Travis. Mm. (laughs) Critical awareness and brutal (laughs) self-honesty. Yeah, there was a, I used to work for a Norwegian organization and there was something that they were trying to convey that they wanted honest feedback. So they were trying to say, be brutally honest, but something was lost in (laughs) translation and it came back as honest brutality. (gasps) Uh, Which is a little bit not the same thing that they're looking for. So uh, everybody out there in YouTube land, on social media, whatever you're watching this from, no brutality, Just, just be brutally honest. It's okay. Brutally honest. Yeah. Just like, or radically honest is also radically how honest. I say it sometimes, yeah. right? Like, like just yourself the truth, right? Like, you, I mean, if you should be honest with anybody, it's yourself. I know a lot of people who aren't. Oh yeah. I mean, I think we all do. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was me. Yeah. So sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Some people are more aware that they actually intentionally deceive themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, The reason I was asking about changing others a moment ago is because there's a lot of us who can't help who we interact with. And so when we have to interact with those people who really suck the life out of us, Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm saying that as more of a, uh, an actual thing. It's not somebody that we hate so much. It's just somebody that it, it just is physically and emotionally and spiritually depleting to be around them. Um, how, how do we really focus on that? How can we become more resilient so we can be around them and not feel so worn out? Yeah, this is a tough question. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to like my answer. So uh, the the thing is, you can change the people that you're around. You always can. Whether or not you want to or whether you not you want to go down that avenue, it's another story, right? Um, you know, maybe it's a terrible boss that you have, right? Who's just completely draining, right? You can always change your job, right? And always go look for another job. If that person is really that terrible, right? You know, if it's a partner or a spouse, I can tell you divorce isn't the worst thing in the world. I've been through it and my life is a thousand times better for it. <laughs> um, and I have a great relationship with my ex-husband. You know, we text memes to each other <laughs> every single day. We send funny memes to each other, right? So we're still, we still have a really great relationship but we were thriving in, in different new ways since we parted with mm. it, right? Um, I think a lot of it too, though, is mindset, right? Like we take on this responsibility for other people and their success and their happiness and their you know, wellness and their emotional regulation. And mm. the thing is, we are not responsible for that. Mm. We just aren't, you know, that's a burden that we just, we've taken on a lot of us. And we can decide to put that burden down whenever we're ready. Mm. You know, like we, you know, whether it's going into a family gathering, right. And being like on edge because you're one, you're wondering what's going to happen or who's going to say something to this person and offend them. Right. Like you're not responsible for that. Right. Mm. Um, We can, however, set boundaries with those people, right. That certain behaviors are or aren't, appropriate right i think boundaries are a great way to make ourselves more resilient right so we okay. can set boundaries at work with hey you know what I'm not, i don't take any business phone calls after six o'clock mm. you know that's my time with my family right you're setting a boundary you're ensuring that you get quality time with your your spouse with your children 
um, with the people that you love, right? Uh, and you're also demonstrating a way of life to other people so that, you know, it doesn't become this normal way of living that we're all available till all hours of the evening, mm. right? Like we don't have to be on the clock <laughs> until we go to bed. I'm on the clock even after I go to bed. I well, that's you. a choice, Kevin. <laughs> that's a choice. Uh, I guess I got used that to that choice. working international because no matter where it is in the world, there's always somebody working. I remember the last project that I managed in oil and gas, um, the, my customer was in Norway. Mm -hmm. My office who owned the project was in the UK. My engineering team was in China mm -hmm. and I had suppliers and vendors on the project in China, in the, Europe and in the US. That's so challenging. I'd wake up 5.30 on a conference call with the UK, getting ready for a 6 a.m. conference call with Norway. Mm -hmm. work all my morning here with the vendors in the Europe and then work my afternoon here with all my American vendors and then sign off around 6 or 8 p.m. have dinner with the family spend a little bit of time with them and then I'm on conference calls again that night with uh, my China engineering team and, and managing those vendors. I, I, it aged me physically yeah, I'm sure it did. I mean, that type of schedule is a recipe for burnout. Mm -hmm. and it is not sustainable for yeah. long-term happiness and joy, right? Right. It just so, isn't. Yeah, when you're talking baselines, uh, transitioning, or even uh, transformation and sustainable, yeah. you're talking my language when it comes to consulting, right? Because op in operations consulting, that's really what you're doing. You're figuring out, okay, if you're making a widget, how many hours does it take for your company to actually make one widget? Okay, how mm -hmm. about a thousand widgets? How many can you crank out in a year? If we're talking about production capabilities, how many more, that, that's your baseline. How right. can we change that baseline to another sustainable level and then start working continuous improvement from there instead mm -hmm. of just keeping the same baseline and just uh, adjusting things? We're yeah. changing the baseline. And I think we're trying to do that here as well when it comes to this resiliency so we have a current baseline and we need you to get us to a more resilient baseline. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I mentioned courage, right? And, and mm -hmm. courage being strength in the face of pain or grief. Courage is also the ability to move through the fear that we come up against, right? When we're, you know, and, you know coming up against change or something new in our life or mm -hmm. whatever, right? And, Courage is a tool, right? Courage is a tool to help us get through those, right? We can be, we can choose to be courageous. We can choose to, you know, move through that fear and um, and embrace the 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 risk, right? Um, the uncertainty, right? Which is usually what happens in those situations of change. There's usually uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So. Courage is the tool to move us through all of those, you know, components of change. Right. Resistance is the ability to use courage over and over and over and over again. Mm. It is basically constant courage, it is constantly moving into new situations, embracing change, um, choosing to, you know, uh, courage over comfort, right? And to mm. and not let fear hold you back right you see fear and you look at it and you're like i'm gonna do it anyway i'm scared as hell but we're going in right right i'm looking for a quote real quick i, I had one earlier today and it was beautiful so i, I need i need to find it because you just said something uh about courage and resiliency that really come alongside with this one it's from maya angelo and uh, i know a lot of people really appreciate her perspective on things so let yeah. me uh, it up real quick if you don't mind oh, yeah, uh, okay. and i'm going to change a couple i'm going to read it first and then i'm going to change a couple words and here we go so you can't use up creativity the more you use it the more you have right so we can actually change that around to resiliency and courage mm -hmm. the more you use it the more you have so it's like, it's almost like flexing a muscle. 
it's absolutely like it's absolutely like flexing a muscle or building a muscle right yeah because the more you put your it's like that exposure therapy right the more you use that the more you practice it Mm -hmm. just like you know an inner dialogue and cultivating a positive you know inner dialogue right the more you speak kindly to yourself the more you move through those moments of fear Mm -hmm. and give yourself the chance to see what's on the other side right Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so I know you have a hard stop here in a few minutes. Yeah. If we have anything that you want us to take away from this conversation, what would that one thing be? Anybody can be courageous and anybody can build their resilience. It just takes some patience, a lot of self-compassion and a commitment, right? A commitment that you want more for yourself, that you want more from life. And you're willing to, to go explore that. All right. So are you willing to go explore that, people? If so, <laughs> we're going to have some contact information for you coming right up. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm Travis. This is Kimberly. Connect with us on, on social media. Connect with us in real life. IRL. FaceTime, whatever you want to call it. I don't think she's any different. I'm not. I, I, I get in trouble for being a little too transparent sometimes, but uh, everybody has a choice. If you don't like it, change the channel. Okay. All right. Thank you as always, Kimberly. And uh, thank, you. thank you for another mental health check. My pleasure. Yes, ma'am.